Thanks so much for joining another episode of Cars, Bikes, and Coffee. I am Kurt, and we are working on the 1973 Datsun 240Z. Now, if you haven't seen the work we've done already on the suspension and the drivetrain, hit that playlist link above, and you can binge watch all of those episodes. Now, today we are adding an electric fuel pump to the Z, and that way we can keep this rebuilt 280ZX engine running hard. And also want to shout out to all my new subscribers. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We want to get to a thousand as our next goal. So if you like what you see, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to share too. Stay tuned. Okay, so we are under the passenger side rear. We're just in front of the gas tank and right behind the mustache bar. And this is about the location we're going to put the fuel pump. And up in this corner, there are three uh, threaded holes, and we're going to take advantage of those. And also, in this case, as I mentioned earlier, this is a 1973 240Z, and I didn't have the electric fuel pump, which normally goes in this location, if there was problems with uh, vapor lock and things like that so there are the wires right here and they are wrapped up a green and black and they are taped and the idea is we're gonna put this fuel pump right about here so I've gone ahead and bent the bracket for the fuel pump just to allow it a little bit more space between the floor and the mustache bar now one thing in this location it's kind of tight so we're gonna go ahead and put some right angle uh, fittings on both sides of the fuel pump so we can have nice sweeping turns for the fuel lines so we're just gonna use some thread sealant and put on these brass fittings Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean this thread a little bit with the bolt and just thread it through and thread it out. And the one I'm using is there's three. One's up high, one's over here in the corner, and one is over here. So this is the one I'm gonna use. We'll get that thread cleaned up. Okay, now that the thread's clean, the way we're going to mount this is the out is on the passenger side or facing the passenger side. And that way we can take the fuel line that's right back here, go in to that nozzle, and then the new line will come over here at the out of the fuel pump. So now we'll get that mounted. All right, so now we want to unwrap these wires, the stock wires, the green and the black. And we have two receptacles, so we need to crimp those on to match. The black is ground, and the green is the power that's going to be in a harness, hopefully, behind the stereo. We'll put on the hoses, and then we'll move to the front. So we have the wiring done. We're gonna put a zip tie just to clean this up a little bit. And we've removed the old fuel hose. So now we're gonna put a new fuel hose and just to go over it, we're gonna go out of the fuel pump into the in and the out will wrap around and go through the must or above the mustache bar and install. So I did just because I need it I marked the fuel pump I for in and O for out, just so I don't forget. So 
So now besides putting on a zip tie for these electrical wires, all the fuel lines are done, the fuel pump is mounted and installed. Now we're going to move up to the engine bay and work on the safety and uh, wiring. So here in the engine bay we've already added the oil pressure sensor switch and this is a three prong and that is teed into the oil pressure sensor and what we need to do here is do some wiring with a relay and we're going to use some power from the solenoid starter and as well some constant power from the battery wire that through the firewall into the ignition and also the fuel pump so let's head to the bench and we'll go over that wiring diagram all right, let's talk about these two electronic things that we're using. We're using an oil pressure sensor switch and a relay. And as far as how the oil pressure sensor switch works, there's three prongs. The first one on the, this side is marked with an I, top is marked with an S, and the side is marked with a P. And what these mean is the I goes to your input, or in this case, we're going to put that to our ignition. The S goes to power only when the uh, starter is engaged. So this is going to help us uh, disengage when the engine stops in the event. Hopefully it never happens. P is power to the relay. And a relay, a single pull, single throw, looks like this guy and there are five prongs to him and they are marked with an 86, an 87, 87A, um, uh, 85, and a 30. And the way this works is you have these two are connected as it sits. So as of right now this wire and this connection are connected. If you supply, in one example, if you supply ground to this side and a 12 volt, volt power source to this side, this will connect to here and disconnect from the center. So essentially, in, in the case that we're using, we're going to ground this and this will go to our P over here. And so when this sees 12 volts, the switch will connect the 30 pin to the 87 pin. And when that 12 volts goes away, it'll connect the 30 to the 87A. So now let me write a diagram, if you haven't fallen asleep yet, on how we're gonna wire this. And first off and foremost, I apologize for this chicken scratch, but go ahead and take a screenshot of this because this is basically what we're gonna do. So we've got our battery, our starter, our relay, our fuel pump, our uh, oil pressure sensor switch and our ignition. So with our relay we have our positive wire coming from our battery connects to the bolt on the starter and that is going to have just a, a good 14 gauge wire right to the 87 terminal and then the 86 side is going to get a ground. The 30 side is going to go to the power side of the fuel pump and the other bolt on the starter, which is the side that only sees power when the engine's starting, that is going to go to the S of our oil pressure sensor switch. See that 10 times fast. Then the I side is going to go to the ignition power wire. So only when the key is in the on position will that see power. And then finally, the P side of the oil pressure sensor switch is going to go right to the 85 terminal. So what we need to do for this, we can do a lot of this wiring inside the engine bay. We do need to bring two wires, the ignition wire and the fuel pump wire into the cabin where we'll do that wiring separately. So let's get started on this. All right, so to get going on this, what we need to do is just gather a few things. So obviously we have the oil pressure uh, sensor switch already installed. We have our relay. One of these sockets are kind of nice. You don't need to buy these. You can just buy the little uh, female plugs for these, but this kind of looks nice. And also in my case, I have two relays and they have these little connectors. So they'll all sit together and then I can bolt them up to the, the 
the sidewall of the engine bay. So that, and then of course we need some wire and some power wire. Um, good tip, what I've done is, is wiring harnesses from cars that I you know, don't need and they're in good condition, I keep the wiring harness. That way I can rob um, different colored wire and so, and it's a little cheaper than having to purchase it from the store. So now we'll get our lengths cut and go from there. All right, so the, re so the relay is going to sit with these two right about here. And so we need to run power, two power wires, one to the side of the starter and then the other side to the battery. And we're gonna use two different power wires. We're gonna use red with white for the starter and then the red to go to the relay. And then we're going to use our miscellaneous wires for all the interconnections. All right, so now that all our lengths are cut, we're going to go ahead and start making all of our connections, do some soldering, some crimping. Uh, we are going to add a fuse to the power side of the relay, and also we'll do some heat shrink tubing on all of our connections. <laughs> So we've got all our connectors on, at least most of them, and one just note on the relay socket. In this case, the center wire we don't need, and it's best if you remove it. So we'll go ahead and remove that. We've left the wires that go to the fuel pump and the ignition wire long so we can run that through the firewall. And so now we'll just kind of finish connecting everything. location and their, where they're going all temporarily taped, we're going to just go ahead and use electrical tape to kind of finish off the wires. Better use would be the, the more modern uh, fiber loom. Um, I'll probably do that at a later time, but for now we're just going to use electric tape. <music> So the next thing we need to work on is we're going to be installing a fuel pressure regulator about in this location and we'll have a fuel filter coming straight off of the fuel line and that's basically like the stock one is used except it's going to sit roughly in about this position. Now we have gone ahead and put some brass fittings onto the fuel pressure regulator including a gauge. Might down the road change to some AN fittings, um, but for now, to get this going, we're going to use some brass. So we're now inside the Z and we've taken the console out and basically exposed the wires and these wires go to the clutch light, the defroster light, choke light and whatnot. And if you look right behind, we have our loom right back here that we need to detach and that is our fuel pump loom. So. Basically what we need to do is unhook this, take a look at the wires. Um, I would like to use the harness that 
is on here and not cut it off. So I'm gonna have to see if I have the opposite end. So let's remove that. All right, so now that we have that harness exposed, this is a male uh, harness plug and I only have the male versions of these. So what I do have though, are the little spades that will go into there. So we'll get these on the wires. We pulled through the wires as well. So we'll just plug those in and then I'll order the harness online. And I'll even include the link to uh, the location where I get all of these harnesses. All right, so all that's left now is to plug the green wire that we did to the fuel pump. And then our yellow wire, that goes to our ignition, which is a black with, can't get it on camera, it's a black with white stripe. And once again, I'm gonna order the actual harness to go over this. I'm gonna put some electrical tape to cover it up and protect these connections, but I'll come back and then redo this terminal at another time. All right, so we finished up the fuel system in the 1973 Datsun 240Z. And we've got a few more things. We just need to button up on the engine. We're gonna be doing a power line all the way to the back of the car. We're gonna build a battery box. And so stay tuned for that. And thanks so much again for watching. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe, share it out, and you have a good one. Thank you.